Welcome to Channel 17, the Town of Colony Government Channel. Good afternoon and welcome to the Senior Resources Show. My name is Christine Carey and I'm the director of the Town of Colony Senior Resources Department. Today as my guest, I have my colleague and my dear friend Aaron Stakowitz, who is the coordinator of the long-term care program at Albany County. Aaron, I think for a lot of the people who are viewing today, they may remember you from the years you worked with our department for about eight years. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to have you here with us today. Thank you for joining me. Well, thanks for asking me. I'm oh. pleased to be here today. Well, I, wa I asked you to come on because of the Albany County New York Connects program, which is a new program in Albany County, and we've made many referrals to it, and we've worked closely with the county in the development of this new program. So I was hoping you could tell us a little bit about what the New York Connects program is. Sure. Um, Albany County New York Connects has been in existence since July of last year and uh, it provides information and assistance to individuals of any age um, that live in Albany County um, regarding long-term care issues. So if they have a child with disabilities, if they're an older adult with disabilities, if they're a younger person with disabilities, we can provide information and assistance about the programs and services that are out there in the community that we can link them up with to make sure that they can remain in the community safe and healthy and have the options they need. To remain living in, in the community and not be forced into t institutional care. That's correct, yeah. Now, when folks call and get information, I think one of the, the beauty of the program is that they're calling into a central no number, um, a single point of entry. Can you talk a little bit about how that works when people call? They don't know where to begin to get services. Maybe it's for um, a caregiver or for an adult child or for an elderly, or, uh, a young child, excuse me, or an elderly person. How, how does the system work when somebody's looking for information? When they call our number, there's three things that uh, take place. First, they do uh, an assessment, a very informal assessment over the phone to figure out you know, what it is the person's looking for. Our office will discuss what kind of options are out there. And from there, um, we can do two things. We've streamlined the process so they can actually access home care uh, um, services through the county, mm -hmm. which would be the ISA program or it would be a Title 19 Medicaid personal care service program. So instead of having to make a second call, we can actually link them up with the home care assessment team to go out and do an assessment if they're eligible for those services. The second piece is we also take adult protective calls and uh, we can try to assist people with elder abuse issues and adult protective issues that might need to be identified. So we actually take those and pass them along to the adult protective team. We also work very closely with uh, the Medicaid unit to make sure that people who are trying to access both uh, community Medicaid services and institutionalized Medicaid services called chronic care Medicaid mm -hmm. to try to make that more effective for them. So there's not a lot of calling around. We can actually transfer what they call warm transfer. We can actually stay in the line and transfer somebody over or actually link them up with a specific individual so they know who they're talking to. And I think that's something <coughs> uh, that um, has been grossly underserved in this area, that there hasn't been a single point where folks can call and get the beauty of your program is that the information is unbiased. Mm -hmm. It's not um, a home care agency giving information or a proprietary organization that's giving information. It's the county and all your workers, I imagine, are trained quite quite intensively to be able to fulfill this function. Oh, absolutely. You know, they went through a lot of uh, training. Some of them were previous adult protective workers, so they have a lot of experience in that. Some of them were home care workers and have experience in that, but they've had a lot of in-service training, many, many hours, and they also participate in a lot of, you know, community-based uh, trainings that are available to them. They go out and see some of the housing facilities so they can see what they're like and, and give people a good perspective as to what they're talking about. Still unbiased, but, you know, at least they can give them a better idea. Well, there's such a myriad of services out there. When you're talking about the, the generate, you know, from children to elders, that's a lot of uh, different types of services and programs for, 
for your staff to get up the speed on oh, and, and to be able to direct people in the right direction. Oh, no doubt about it. And I think the hard part is that sometimes we don't always know all the answers, but the staff are always willing to find out what the answers are. Mm -hmm. They'll always take it to the next level and find out and get back to the person if they need to. So. Now for a senior, well, you know, we're here in the town of Colony and of course you know and mm -hmm. I know how good the services are and how easy it is to access information. Mm -hmm. What happens when folks call your number and the services provided already in the town? How do you handle those? types of calls? Normally, I mean, what we do is we try to make sure they get the linkage back to you guys at the Town of Colony because we know that the services are excellent here and we want to make sure you're the trusted resource here in the town. We want to make sure that they're making the linkages with you. We work collaboratively together with you to assist you in any way that we can to make sure that we can be available still, but we certainly will make the transfer to you guys to make sure that they can get more of the hands-on personalized services that they need. Mm -hmm. Well, we appreciate that and enjoy the working um, collaboration that we have with you. Can, when, when folks call, can you tell me about some of the different types of referrals, uh, you know, as far as what's provided for meals, if people are looking for that? What types of linkages do you make if people need in-home services? We mentioned ISEP, and mm -hmm. I'd like to talk a little bit more about that because I think it's such a critical component to keeping folks in their homes. So, for example, if I was an adult child and called in looking for home delivery, delivered meals for my mom and maybe someone to come in and help with um, meal preparation or housekeeping. How do you handle a call like that? Mm -hmm. And is the information that a caregiver give, gives you confidential information within your agency? Yeah. First I'll answer the confidentiality is definitely something that is um, absolutely necessary. We're required to comply with uh, the Health Insurance Portability Act. Um, so any information that comes in our office does not get divulged out unless we have signed release forms and the person has agreed to allow us to release that information. Okay. So it does remain confidential. Um, as far as the services that are out there, certainly um, we do make referrals to Meals on Wheels. If the assessment needs to be done, we Albany County also, New York Connects has a uh, collaboration um, with the Department of Health who does the assessments for Meals on Wheels. So we can get, if it's an emergency situation, we can get the nurse to go out and do an assessment as quickly as possible, sometime mm -hmm. within the same day, sometime by the next day, and also get the emergency meals if in the meantime started. Mm -hmm. um, as far as the in-home services, we do provide people with an array of options that are out there. Um, one being, you know, the ISEP program if they're mm -hmm. seniors. Mm -hmm. um, if they're eligible for Medicaid, we'll talk about the personal care services, or maybe if it's private pay and they're not eligible for either of those programs, we talk about the agencies that are out there that they can actually private pay someone to do that. Mm -hmm. um, we also do get involved in consumer-directed programs, which mm -hmm. are a lot of the disability population uses where they hire um, their own individual and actually manage their care that way. So there, there's a lot of um, options out there. It's a matter of breaking them down into small pieces so people understand and not get overwhelmed with how many things are out there. And a care plan for each person or what the choices are. It's not cookie cutter for no, everyone. No, everyone comes to, I'm sure, as they come to our department with um, you know a different situation, with a variety of unmet needs. Mm -hmm. So you have the ability to tailor what services are out there to what a person's needs are. Oh, definitely. And if we discuss something and it's not right and they decide that they need to change it, then we'll talk about other options as well. Now, so. when you talk about the ISEP program, mm -hmm. I know that stands for the Expanded In-Home Services for the Elderly Program. I think it's the most critical program mm -hmm. out there funded through the county, through mm -hmm. the Older Americans Act, that helps to keep seniors living in the community, mm -hmm. supports their independence. Can you tell me a little bit about that program and how folks access that program? Sure. Uh, uh, the ISEP program you have to be age 60 or older in order mm -hmm. to access it and you can't be Medicaid eligible so that's one of the key things. Mm -hmm. um, if you're a single individual um, you have to meet certain income requirements in order to get it works on a sliding scale. Mm -hmm. So for 2008 the income for a single person was $1,307 so they'd have to be at or below that level in order to get a reduced rate for personal care services. Mm -hmm. If it's a couple it's $1,750 mm -hmm. that they'd have to be eligible for. There are housing deductions that they can take mm -hmm. and the home care assessment team actually goes out does the assessment and says okay let me see what your needs are let me look at your income eligibility requirements and mm -hmm. let me take some deductions from that and then we'll determine what your cost share will be because mm -hmm. it is a cost share program mm -hmm. if you're over that amount uh, the income level you can still get ICEP services but you'll pay a hundred percent of the cost of the personal care services that are coming in mm -hmm. 
But isn't it still through the county rates? So there, it's a little it bit is. of it's a reduction. It is. It's a little bit of a reduction. Mm -hmm. So, um, which is a benefit to some sure, people. Sure, absolutely. You know? Every little bit helps. The maximum number of hours you can get through ISIP is 20 hours. Mm -hmm. um, most people, on an average, we're seeing probably about between five and seven hours, mm -hmm. somewhere around there. And you have to have at least two. Um, activities of daily living that are provided, whether it be housekeeping, laundry, bathing, shopping, you know, something of that nature. You have to have at least two of them done in order to get the services mm -hmm. in place. Mm -hmm. um, it's a highly utilized program. Mm -hmm. We're lucky in Albany County because we don't have a waiting list because the county's been, you know, uh, financially able to support the program mm -hmm. it, over and above what the uh, state has provided funding for. So. Well, it's certainly been a priority of the county executives mm -hmm. and it's been a priority of the uh, commissioners as well because that is the way to save from people having to go in nursing homes and the Medicaid burden of paying for long-term care to give mm -hmm. people the services that they need so they can stay in their home. Oh, absolutely. So they should call the intake number, which we'll give at the end yes. of the show, mm -hmm. for folks to get more information on that program. Absolutely. And even if they just want an assessment, you know, if they think they might be interested, I always encourage them to call and at least set up the home care assessment to... Yeah, and how long does the assessment take? When right when now we're waiting. It? We're about two weeks um, out for uh, from the time, time they make the referral. Make yes. the referral. Yeah. And when uh, a caseworker goes out to see somebody in their home, I'm sure they show identification and call so that the seniors aren't a lot letting strangers that they don't know in their home. Absolutely. So. And they can always ask for identification because they always have that on them. And they should yeah. always yes. ask that. And definitely. sometimes they'll have some of the times they'll have a Department of Health nurse or a Health Department, Albany County Health Department nurse with them um, because she also does the Medicaid. She's required to do the Medicaid assessment. So if you see another person with them, it mm -hmm. may be the Health Department nurse who is also there to assist with the assessment. It's not required, but sometimes it gives a nice medical perspective on yeah, what's happening. I think happening. that's important. It gives the full range of what the services okay. or what the needs are. Now, just to follow up on that, if a f person wanted the ISEP program and they wanted home delivered meals, would that nurse do that assessment? Could, all, could it all be done in one visit or is it two different visits? No, unfortunately. Well, she can start the process for the home delivered meals. And then if they need additional information, what she'll do is she'll relay the assessment piece to the health department meals and wheels person. Mm -hmm. And then from there, they can either make a call or they can go out and do the additional assessment piece that they need to. There's a whole nutritional component that's built into that. And mm -hmm. the home care assessment nurse does not get into that, unfortunately. Okay. Hopefully over time, that'll be something that we'll be able to streamline. But are you um, <coughs> getting a lot of calls from the disabled population in, in the county? I know in Colony, through our Senior Resources Department, we do help a lot of people who are under 60 who have varying levels of disability because they don't know necessarily where to begin or how to access services. Do you find that you're dealing more with providing assistance to seniors, or is it more the disabled population that's accessing your services? As, as we've become more known throughout the Capital District, um, more and more disabled people are calling us to find their way through the system because it's not as easy for them. Not mm -hmm. that it's easy for seniors either, but there tends to be um, more s assistance in that arena. There seems to be uh, a difficulty with options for people that are in the 55 to 65 range, especially yes. in the health insurance piece and, mm -hmm. and, and having the financial stability to maintain their home and, and the services that are out there. So mm -hmm. we're getting more and more calls about that mm -hmm. and trying to make sure we're identifying the gaps that are out there too so we can evaluate maybe in the future how we can try to address some of those gaps. Mm -hmm. So, And while we're talking about services that are provided through the county, I'm sure through the um, New York Connects number you get a lot of calls for the Home Energy Assistance Program at this time of mm -hmm. year. Can you talk a little bit about the Home Energy Assistance Program and how folks, I know seniors over 60, mm -hmm. they can apply through our office. We work with the Choices Program in Albany County to get folks on HEAP, and we have different satellites in the town uh, for people to apply in person. Mm -hmm. But um, the eligibility, uh, are, you, are you able to help families with that or um, you know, with the application process, are there, are there ways that it's streamlined going through the New York Connects number? Uh, the only thing that is streamlined is the fact that the seniors can do the application via the mail or they can do it at one of the satellite locations that are out there. Mm -hmm. um, the difficulty is that the under 60 population still needs to have a face-to-face -face interview. So mm -hmm. there are a number of locations throughout the Capital District that people can go to to apply for HEAP. Mm -hmm. um, if they're a food stamp or a Medicaid recipient, um, they will automatically get a HEAP benefit, but they need to call their worker in order to make sure that that's going through. Okay, that's so, good to know. Um, you know, the income guidelines have gone up a little bit this year. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have them. Yeah, I think for one person <coughs> it's um, 
I think it's 1,963. Sounds, I believe that's And it's a little over 2,000 for two, but I mm -hmm. never know the figures right off the top of my head. But certainly we can, you know, send out applications. We can certainly mm -hmm. get people the list of documentations they need to mm -hmm. um, have prepared when they go for the face-to-face -face interview so they can get the benefits in place. Mm -hmm. So Well, I think, you know, there has been more uh, federal funds allocated this year for heating costs. So mm -hmm. folks that think they may be eligible, we will give the New York Connects number for mm -hmm. Albany County and the senior resources number so folks can call and get more information. Uh, there is help out there. We're fortunate this year to be able to mm -hmm. provide larger benefits to people for their heating costs. Another question I have, I know this is Albany County's New York Connects, but if a person is watching this show, a caregiver and their parent lives in Schenectady or Rensselaer or Saratoga or even another part of the state and they want to know a little bit about this program, is it, um, is it provided throughout, this, th throughout New York State? Most of the counties are, have an, a New York Connects office. Um, some of them are just still in the beginning stages of getting started. And what you can do is if you're looking for a specific county's uh, New York Connects number, you can certainly call our Albany County New York Connects and we'll give you the right information so you have the individuals to contact. You can also go to the New York State Office of the Aging website and they'll list um, all of the counties that have phone numbers for their New York Connects offices that are up and running. Mm -hmm. So we get quite a few calls for people looking for alternative county numbers, which mm -hmm. is fine. Well, many people who live in the town of Colony receive services in Schenectady or in Saratoga because they may live on the outlying mm -hmm. area. So I think it would be important to work closely with the other counties oh, to definitely. provide services. Uh, when folks call and they're, um, you had mentioned a little bit, we talked about the ISEP, adult protective situations, that they mm -hmm. can go right through your um, New York Connects uh, number to get some information on adult protective assistance or if a person needs to make a referral. Can you tell me a little bit about the age cohorts that are covered under adult protective services and what types of referrals you typically see and how you're able to help those mm -hmm. folks? Um, the adult protective referrals come in for individuals ages 18 and older. Um, it doesn't matter, you know, as long as they're in the county area. We will, and depending on the situation, um, determines whether or not the actual referral will be taken. Mm -hmm. um, they really have to they have to give the whole story. So mm -hmm. the intake workers are very experienced at understanding what constitutes an adult protective situation. You know, if somebody has someone able to assist them, you know, the ability to assist them, they have someone already helping them, that may not always fall under an adult protective realm. Mm -hmm. But we do see a, a number of uh, self-neglect, people who don't take care of themselves. Um, we see a number of people who are being uh, financially exploited, uh, physically abused. Um, a lot of mental health issues, people unable to care for themselves due to mental illness. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of different areas. And if people aren't sure, we always say, we'll give a call, talk it over with the intake worker so they can tell you whether or not mm -hmm. it's uh, something that can be investigated further. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if it's a life-threatening situation, the staff will go out immediately to take um, the referral and, and investigate what's going on. So mm -hmm. we have a number of uh, different cases, you know, in fact, we've seen the adult protective cases increase significantly over the last few months for whatever reason. So, mm -hmm. we're one of we're one of the only counties that actually has our adult protective um, intake calls come in through New York Connects. Really? Oh, I didn't yes. realize that. Yes. And the reason we do that is we find that most of the adult protective situations can be resolved by having uh, long-term care support services put in place, either home care mm -hmm. services, Meals on Wheels. Mm -hmm. um, transportation issues. Mm -hmm. and by linking them up with those services through New York Connects, it, it tends to alleviate some of the adult protective issues that are occurring. Mm -hmm. So that's why we decided to do that. Well, I imagine that you've seen a spike in numbers because of the access to the New York Connects line. I, I know mm -hmm. seniors and family members are, are calling the number more for information. So mm -hmm. that would probably speak to that, that increase. Now, when folks are um, thinking that maybe there's an adult protective situation and sometimes they'll call the senior resources department I'm concerned about a neighbor it's the summertime and they're outside in their winter coat or you know I haven't seen the curtains opened in a week or a banker may call and say you know we're concerned someone's making um, large withdrawals from the bank for which is completely out of their pattern we see that quite often do you want these individuals to call directly, do you, the referrals? Do you like them to come from the person who's identifying the situation, or do you like them to come from you know, departments such as ours? It's better if it comes from the actual person that is you know, calling in the situation, because they have firsthand experience. Mm -hmm. So it gives us a better idea as to what's taking place. Mm -hmm. So you're not 
um, getting secondhand knowledge. You're mm -hmm. not really mm -hmm. uh, having anybody to transpose what's really taking place. Right, so right. if somebody's seeing something, and they can make the uh, referral anonymously, they don't need to give their name. We prefer okay. that they do, but mm -hmm. um, just so we can make sure that we know that things are being taken care of and mm -hmm. um, that the situation is, is not ongoing and we can follow up with it. But mm -hmm really it's better if it comes from the person that's making the referral so if you get the calls like that and you ask that person to call you know us that would be good if yeah. if you're concerned that they may not follow through on that then certainly we will take the information from right. the department so right and of the other age of the the generational um, scale the children mm -hmm. when through the New York Connects line you know do you get child protective referrals and is there a specific and separate number for that there is a specific and separate number for that um, we've had a, a several situations where we have an adult uh, adult protective situation and we have children involved at the same time mm -hmm. so we collaborate very closely with child protective services to make sure that all aspects of the family are being covered through both entities to make sure that the safety of the children and the adults are being taken into consideration mm -hmm. um, so we do make we encourage the person who's making the adult protective referral to also make a child protective referral, mm -hmm. but we are required by law to make a child protective referral okay. as well, so we will do that. Mm -hmm. But there is um, a separate number that individuals can call to make a referral if they have concerns about that. Okay. So although we deal with children with disabilities, um, we don't actually handle the child protective situations. Mm -hmm. okay. So we'll actually refer those on to mm -hmm. CPS to handle. And whether you're trying to help a child or an adult, if you don't help the family, you're not helping anybody. That's that exactly right. Social work exactly. Training, right, Aaron? Mm -hmm. Now, when folks call, we'll go back a little bit now about um, a really big uh, issue this time of year is health insurance. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of seniors were in the open enrollment period, and they're looking at their health plans and uh, trying to decide if they need a drug plan or if they need to change their plan. I know in Colony, we're a health insurance counselor um, designated by Albany County. Uh, we provide health insurance counseling programs. Do you provide that if people call you the uh, New York Connects number and is looking for information on plans? How do you handle those types of referrals? We actually link them back up with the high cap coordinators okay. out in the community because they get the one on one. Uh, mm -hmm. counseling that they need. Mm -hmm. We certainly answer a number of questions about Medicare coverage or some of the plans that they may have questions about. Um, the staff do get training in the HICAP, mm -hmm. the Health Insurance Information Assistance and Counseling Program. They do go through training for that, but that's not their specialty. Mm -hmm. So we prefer you know, individuals to speak to people who have mm -hmm. the knowledge and the experience to um, educate people the right way. Mm -hmm. So we'll make the linkages that way instead. And I'm, I, I think the, the beauty of the Albany County New York Connects is that so many times I see it in, in our own department that by the time a senior or a family member gets to our department they've made five calls whether it's for transportation or home delivered meals or home care agency and by having a central number that folks can call it kind of streamlines that whole process are you are you finding that oh with definitely the referrals that you're getting definitely and we have a whole follow-up piece built into our system now where some of the caseworkers will call back those individuals where they feel they've given a lot of information or there's a mm -hmm. crisis occurring so we can make sure that people are being linked up with the services they need mm -hmm. and if they're not being linked up why aren't they being linked up what mm -hmm. is causing them the difficulties in getting those services so mm -hmm. I think that's an important component to make sure people get that you know that's a very important component because mm -hmm. it speaks to handling the immediate crisis or situation that a per person it is is in but it also goes a long way in preventing more situations from occurring that may possibly lead to a person not being able to stay in their own home Oh, definitely so I think it's really critical mm -hmm. in that in that component as well um, some of the other things that I know that folks can call I'll, I'll, um, I'll mention them and if you want to add a little more to it we talked about the preventative and the protective services, um, different housing options, you might want to speak a little bit about that, transportation options, nutrition and wellness programs, um, different types of home care services, uh, different types of housing options. I mean, everybody wants to stay in their own mm -hmm. home, but there may become a time where you need assisted living or you need to, you're forced to think about long-term care, nursing homes. Uh, a few months ago, we did a program here on this channel on long-term care insurance. Mm -hmm. So I know these are some of the things that your staff is trained to help people navigate these different programs? Oh, absolutely. You know, we get a lot of calls on different housing options that are there, whether it be subsidized housing for seniors, whether 
whether it be low-income housing for uh, and disabled uh, accommodations for people that have disabilities. We also get a lot of calls on assisted living nursing homes um, because there's a lot of confusion as to who pays for what mm -hmm. in assisted living component. Mm -hmm. Um, so we do have an understanding of those systems there and we can provide people with a list of the housing that's available if they mm -hmm. need it mm -hmm. so it helps them make a better choice as to what they're looking for so it can meet their needs mm -hmm. as far as the transportation there's a number of transportation options out there even if so, I mean in colony alone there's colony senior service centers a lot of the town local towns have and senior centers have transportation the Medicaid transportation system that is out there mm -hmm. um, there's you know taxi cabs we try to refer people to a number of organizations that are out there that provide um, any kind of ride they can get mm -hmm. some of the companion programs you know mm -hmm. might fall into that realm as well some of the other things that we, we get into a lot of discussions about, which I know we haven't touched upon, is some of the waiver programs, the Medicaid waiver programs mm -hmm. that are out there. We've been getting more and more calls for people who are being or looking to be deinstitutionalized, being brought out into the community. Mm -hmm. So there's a nursing home transition diversion waiver program, which is a, a new program for people to access. Um, and these are Medicaid waiver programs, but it's an option for people. There's the long-term home health care program, which people can access, mm -hmm. once again, Medicaid-based. Mm -hmm. But if people are eligible, they can get a whole array of services in their home without having to be placed in a nursing facility. Mm -hmm. And that's really a program all in and of itself, talking about the different waiver programs. So I mm -hmm. urge folks who think that they might, you know, want more information or learn more about these programs to call the New York Connects number directly because it is a very specific uh, program with a lot of criteria for eligibility. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, in, in closing, I think um, this information uh, that's available to folks and how to um, receive unbiased, professional, confidential information is really critical. And I really applaud the work that the county is doing and the uh, support that you've received from the commissioners of social services and aging, as well as our county executive to uh, put this program in place. I know from my involvement in it that Albany County is really one of the leaders in the state as far as the development of the New York Connects program. Isn't that correct? Mm -hmm. It is. And we're very proud of our accomplishments to date. And we look forward to it expanding in the future and working even more collaboratively with you know organizations such as yourself uh, to make sure that things are streamlined so people have a better ability to access the services that they need. Absolutely. Like, as we, I said, unbiased and confidential information is really what folks need to remain living in the community and get the services that they've paid taxes for. Mm -hmm. These services are all funded through the county. I guess we should mention that when folks call you for information, it is at no charge, correct? That is right. It is all free. Mm -hmm. So That's, It's county-funded mm -hmm. dollars That's you know, right. that people have paid taxes for, so people should definitely access this information. In closing, do you want to provide us with the phone number where folks can call for information in the website? Sure. Um, if you call 447 7 -1 -1 one seven seven okay. we're open Monday through Friday 830 to 430 including lunch so people feel free to call anytime they want to okay. um, you can also go to our Albany County website which is www.albanycounty.com and if you do a slash New York connects it'll bring you right to our website there okay. and we do have email access so you can email us as well we do respond to email so terrific terrific well this has been very informative and speaking from experience I've, I've used the program and I know it works well and I know that you've been out speaking to a lot of senior groups in the town and outside of the town of Colony folks can always contact you through the 7177 number? They can. They can always ask for me through there, and they'll make the right linkages to my office. So, And if seniors wanted you to come out and speak to their senior groups or at church groups, you're available to do that oh, as well about this Definitely. Program? I'm more right. than willing to do that. I appreciate that, and I appreciate Thanks. all the work that you do. We miss working with you I in miss town and colony. You too, so. Thank you for joining me today on another episode of the Senior Resources Department. I look forward to seeing you next time.